<clears throat> Good morning. New mercies every morning. Good thing. <laughs> it's a good thing that they are new every morning. We need mercies every day, don't we? We're going to begin today with, I'm but a stranger here, number 748, because Ezekiel uh, has to preach a sermon about being exiles and not being at home, in a sense. Uh, 748. I'm but a stranger here, that is my home. Earth is a desert dream, that is my home. Danger and sorrow stand round me. came to me, son of man, you dwell in the midst of a rebellious house who have eyes to see but see not, who have ears to hear but hear not, for they are a rebellious house. As for you, son of man, prepare for yourself an exile's baggage and go into exile by day in their sight. You shall go like an exile from your place to another place in their sight. Perhaps they will understand, though they are a rebellious house. You shall bring out your baggage by day in their sight as baggage for exile, and you shall go out yourself at evening in their sight as those do who must go into exile. In their sight, <laughs> dig through the wall and bring your baggage out through it. In their sight, you shall lift the baggage upon your shoulder and carry it out at dusk. You shall cover your face that you may not see the land, for I have made you a sign for the house of Israel. And I did as I was commanded. I brought out my baggage by day as baggage for exile, and in the evening I dug through the wall with my own hands. I brought out my baggage at dusk, carrying it on my shoulder in their sight. In the morning, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, has not the house of Israel, the rebellious house, said to you, What are you doing? Say to them, Thus says the Lord God. This oracle concerns the prince in Jerusalem and all the house of Israel who are in it. Say, I am a sign for you. As I have done, so shall it be done to them. They shall go into exile, into captivity. And the prince who is among them shall lift his baggage upon his shoulder at dusk and shall go out. They shall dig through the wall to bring him out through it. He shall cover his face, that he may not see the land with his eyes. And I will spread my net over him, 
and he shall be taken in my snare, and I will bring him to Babylon, the land of the Chaldeans, yet he shall not see it, and he shall die there. And I will scatter toward every wind all who are around him, his helpers and his troops, and I will unsheathe the sword after them, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I disperse them among the nations and scatter them among the countries. But I will let a few of them escape from the sword, from famine and pestilence, that they may declare all their abominations among the nations where they go, and may know that I am the Lord. And the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, eat your bread with quaking, and drink water with trembling and with anxiety. And say to the people of the land, Thus says the Lord God concerning the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the land of Israel. They shall eat their bread with anxiety and drink water in dismay. In this way her land will be stripped of all it contains on account of the violence of all those who dwell in it. And the inhabited city shall be laid waste, and the land shall become a desolation, and you shall know that I am the Lord. And the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, what is this proverb that you have about the land of Israel, saying, The days grow long, and every vision comes to nothing? Tell them, therefore, Thus says the Lord God, I will put an end to this proverb, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say to them, The days are near, and the fulfillment of every vision. For there shall be no more any false vision, or flattering divination within the house of Israel. For I am the Lord. I will speak the word that I will speak, and it will be performed. It will no longer be delayed, but in your days, O rebellious house, I will speak the word and perform it, declares the Lord God. And the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, the vision that he sees is for many days from now. And he prophesies of times far off. Therefore say to them, Thus says the Lord God, None of my words will be delayed any longer, but the word that I speak will be performed, declares the Lord God. This is a powerful chapter. Yeah. This is a series of sermons, because it keeps saying, The word of the Lord came to me. It's like these it's a new messages day after day. This is a sermon series here in chapter 12. Um. So, uh, starts off again with, you dwell in the midst of a rebellious house. <laughs> uh, these people just, they, they hear, but they don't hear. And that, that's how a lot of pastors feel. People hear and they say, oh, wow, good sermon, pastor, but nothing changes. You know, uh, you've seen the billboards for um from the government about preparedness do you know where your family is and yeah. you notice those mm -hmm. and you go to the readiness.gov or something like that or ready.gov um and they talk about preparing for a natural disaster and it could not doesn't mean the nuclear attack or anything necessarily but uh um if there is a chemical spill from a train that has happened right if there is a uh, if there is a terrorist attack, if there is a um, a hurricane, certain parts of the country, everybody has to evacuate all of a sudden. Um, we were evacuated once. We had to. We were ordered to evacuate our apartment, our first year in seminary, because of a flood, and uh, very near our apartment on both sides were levees, and the water was just at the top of the levees, and they were afraid that if the levee broke, that uh, it was like up on the sandbags. If the levee broke, then our apartment would very quickly be under uh, six or eight feet of water. So we had to go stay someplace else. So the government says you should have a go bag. You should have a go bag. I recommend a bright color like this because I love bright colors. And... Um, uh, in the go bag, you should have uh, a change of clothes, uh, fresh socks and underwear. You should have uh, a bottle for water, not a glass bottle, something, something hard. Um, I I've got a hunting knife here. 
that would be that would be pretty nifty to have. Uh, not real practical most of the time to carry around. <laughs> Here here is an emergency radio, one of those hand crank things you can use to charge your cell phone. I'm not sure I have the cell phone charger stuff anymore, <laughs> but the hand crank still works. And uh, flashlight, things things that you might need in an emergency. Do you have a go bag? No. He doesn't either. Neither do I. I just threw this together for this morning. Yeah. As you can see, I couldn't find our first aid kit. That bodes ill for... Uh, you don't have a go bag, and I don't, because you don't expect it to happen. Do you? But you know it does. You know that things do, that things do happen. Um... And sometimes you rush around the house to throw things into a bag because you, I need to go take care of so and so, or this has happened and I gotta, I gotta go. Being prepared, because we know that what God has told us will take place will take place. Uh, these people did not believe that this would happen, and so Ezekiel is called not to just be a messenger or to preach a message. He is called to be. A message himself and that's always a lot harder for a pastor to do for him to live in his own life what he hopes his members will learn and and in many ways we've tried to do that but the the consequence the result is usually oh you're a very holy people you live that way because you're a minister and so, trusting in the Lord for something, or making your decisions with prayer, well, that's wonderful. As a minister, you do that. <laughs> but, somehow that's not for you. Um, the choices we made in raising our children, sometimes people said, well, of course, they're the pastor's children. And so, they wouldn't be allowed to do this, or they should be directed in that. But, but your children you'd raise differently. I don't understand. Do you not think that these things will take place? Uh, Ezekiel puts together a go bag, like he's going to have to go off on exile, and they could take just a few of their belongings, whatever they could carry, and that's all they had, and he digs a hole in the wall of his house. That's commitment. He digs a hole in the wall of his house through the mud brick, and goes out, and he makes sure that this is at a time when everybody sees what he's doing. Uh, he maybe dug the hole from the outside in, then he goes in and gets his stuff and comes out. And and uh, covers his eyes, he doesn't want to see the land, and he leaves. And it doesn't say where he spends the night. But he had an uncomfortable night someplace. And then he comes back in the morning and they're saying, Pastor Ezekiel, are you nuts? What are you doing? And he says, this is what God says to you. This is what's going to happen to the people that you... That, see, the people in Babylon, where Ezekiel is in exile, they still think that, oh, but there's Jerusalem. Ah, oh, there's still the city. There's still the temple. And they don't believe anything bad is going to happen to the temple. Because it's God's temple, right? But God has abandoned his temple in the last chapter. In, the last, in Ezekiel's sermon last week. And... And so, uh, he says, this is exactly what's going to take place. So you flip back to 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 25. Um, there, uh, Zedekiah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came with all his army against Jerusalem and laid siege to it. And they built siege works all around it. So the city was besieged till the 11th year of King Zedekiah. And on the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine was so severe in the city, there was no food for the people of the land. Then a breach was made in the city, and all the men of war fled by night by way of the gate between the two walls by the king's garden, and the Chaldeans were around the city, that is, the Babylonians. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued the king and overtook him in the plains of Jericho, and all his army was scattered from him. Are you recognizing these words from what Karen was reading? And they captured the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon at Riblah. And they passed sentence on him. They slaughtered the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes and put out the eyes of Zedekiah and bound him in chains and took him to Babylon. 
Zedekiah, the true king of Israel, the inherited king of Israel, had already been carried into exile along with Ezekiel and Daniel and so on. But Zedekiah was the king that was appointed by the Babylonians to take his place and to, to be a governor there. And so it says in Ezekiel, uh, oh, where was it? The, the one that, the man that is prince over them. He doesn't say that it's the, the king. The man that is prince over them, this is what will happen to him. He will be taken, they shall dig through the wall, bring him out through it. He'll cover his face so he may not see the land with his eyes. I will spread my net over him and he will be taken in my snare. God is the one who captures him, not the Babylonians. Taken in my snare and I'll bring him to Babylon. Yet he shall not see it and he shall die there. He wouldn't see Babylon because they poked his eyes out. The people of Babylon see Ezekiel do all these things. They don't just hear him talk. They see him do these things, and they will see God do these things, even though they do not believe that it will happen soon. How about you? What do you see God doing? We get so busy, we get so obsessed with little details, and we think it's the world doing this, it's the Chinese doing that, it's, it's the government, it's the Democrats, or it's the Republicans doing this or that. What is God doing? God says it was he who captured Zedekiah and judged him. It was he who was judging Jerusalem and the temple. What is God doing with our world, our nation? our community, our family, our church. God may lead us through difficult times. And he may desire us to, to take those things that are most important and be prepared to have those, to know what those things are. Not just everything. And what are those things that are most critical in your life? You'd say your family. You can take your family with you all the way to heaven if you share your faith with them. You can, you can take God's word with you. If you keep God's word with you, then you have the most important thing you need to see, like a flashlight, to know, like the, like the radio, to be sustained with the water of life and the bread of life. How important are these things to you? How prepared are you? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Everybody listened to Ezekiel's sermon and responded in their own way. Those people back in Jerusalem were unprepared for this siege, for your judgment. It would not end, no matter how much they stockpiled, it would not end until they were desolate. Lord, if only they had come and turned to you. We, Lord, are not as prepared as we should be. We need to grow in faith. We need to be built on the foundation there. We've built parts of our lives, many parts of our lives on, on impermanent things. Lord, grant that we would, uh, we would see what is most important in our life and keep hold of those things, those things that you have given us. Father, we pray for those who are going through any kind of an emergency today, uh, especially a dear friend of ours who is hospitalized today. Lord, these sudden changes, you, you must go from your home, and what can you take with you? Lord, grant that they may take with them the, your Holy Spirit. 
knowledge and confidence of your presence. Power of prayer. Your word, which even if they don't have it in their hands, that they have in their hearts and their minds. Grant, Lord Jesus, that we will carry with us your gift, all that we need. The gift of faith and eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Carl Newkirk was on there. Remember Carl Newkirk? Mm-hmm. Hey, Carl. He was from my dormitory my freshman year. Wow. This is an awesome thing to be able to make these connections. So, the Lord be with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.